the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious all-powerful character who is a problem to the police but a crusader for law in reality dan garrett a rookie patrolman loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the blue beetle as the blue beetle he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor flexible as silk but stronger than steel Today's episode of the transcribed Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is the second part of a story entitled The Asylum of Dr. Dreer. In the previous episode, Diana Tilson asked Patrolman Dan Garrett to locate her missing foster father, Banker Tilson. He has disappeared, leaving a note addressed to her saying he was going away for a rest. She is suspicious, however, of the actions of Tilson's nephew, Linus Weatherby, and a Dr. Dreer, a psychiatrist, whom Weatherby brought in to examine the banker. Armed with a description of the banker, Dan Garrett and Mike Manigan visit the private sanitarium of Dr. Dreer. They are permitted to interview a man who fits the description of Banker Tilson. He claims he is on the verge of a nervous breakdown and wishes to remain for a long rest. But a suspicious circumstance makes Dan Garrett decide to return later as the Blue Beetle. He finds the real Tilson and is about to release him from a cell when he is discovered by the guards and Dr. Dreer and overcome by tear gas. As the episode ended, he was strapped in a straitjacket and locked up among the more violent inmates. As today's story opens, Diana Tilson's telephone is ringing. Hello? Is that Miss Tilson? Yes. Have you seen Dan Garrett? Who is this? Uh, this is Officer Monaghan, Danny's pal. Oh, no, I haven't seen him. Oh, that's strange. I ain't either. Not since we got back from Dr. Dreer's insane asylum. Oh, tell me, did you find my father? Yes, we did. Did you show him my note? Yes, he read it. Himself. Oh, did he have his glasses? Yes, but he... Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. What you are? Oh, hello, Lana. Yes, I was talking to someone about father. And what did they tell you? Well, they've seen him out of Dr. Dreer's sanitarium. Oh. Diana... Why don't you marry me and let me take care of you? Someday I'll inherit Uncle's money and we'll be rich. No, Linus, it's no use. I'll never marry you. You may change your mind. You're upset now. I think I'll have Dr. Dreer talk with you. Perhaps a little rest at his sanitarium would uh, get your thoughts in the right well, channel. Pardon me, sir. Dr. Dreer calling to see you. Thank you, Edward. Show him into the library. I'll be right down. Uh, very good, sir. Before I go, I want to warn you, young lady... If you want to save your father's life, you'd better do as I say. Good night, my dear. You say, Dreer, the Blue Beetle was also out there? Yes. We caught him talking to your uncle, the real banker Tilson. Mm, that's bad. No, we'll take care of the Blue Beetle. Don't worry about him. What about Olson? The actor who's impersonating Tilton. I'll take care of him also. And by the way, he'd like to have some more money on account. And so would I. He'll get it. And you'll get it when I get it. What about the meeting with the mayor's committee tomorrow? That's all arranged. You have Olson there, made up as my uncle. You'll verify what I tell the committee. Very well. But I must be getting back to my sanitarium. It's quite late and... Stay here tonight. Everything's in order out there, isn't it? I believe so. Fine. Then we'll go out and burn up the town. After tomorrow, our worries will be over. you out of here. Good. I'll pay you well if you make it. The Blue Beetle doesn't work for money. <clears throat> you belong here, Blue Beetle. You're really crazy. Where are the guards? In the other wing, drunk, apparently. Come on, Mr. Tilson. Follow me. 
How did you get out of that cell and straitjacket? Master keys and a special 2X formula that gives me super strength and vitality. Yeah. Yeah, I've locked the guards in their quarters. <laughs> what a headache they're going to have in the morning. That may be for Dr. Dreer. Well, what are you going to do? Wait here until we see if Dr. Dreer's in his office. I huh. wonder where Dreer is. He's probably in town with that no-good nephew of mine, painting the town red. I'm going to take a chance and answer the telephone. I'll disguise my voice. Hello? Yeah? Who? Oh, is that Dr. Dreer? Yeah, this is Gus. Yeah, Gus. Sure, everything's under control. Yeah, you stay in town tonight. Okay. Who? Oh, the guy impersonating Tilson. <laughs> sure, I'll leave a message for him. I mean, uh, I I'll tell him to come to town in the morning. Uh, the Blue Beetle? <laughs> Say, Doc, the Blue Beetle and Tilson are just where they ought to be. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Why, you'd make a good actor, Blue Beetle. <laughs> oh, thanks. Come on, let's get out of here. My car's hidden alongside the road about a mile from there. Think you can make it, Mr. Tilson? I never felt better in my life. Come on. When I get back to town, we'll put those scoundrels where they belong. I can't understand what's oh, keeping it. Oh, here comes Weatherby now. Oh, where's Tilson? I don't know he should be here. Gentlemen. <laughs> Have the mayor arrived? Well, he couldn't make it. Press of official duties. Oh, I'm sorry. Will you be seated, please? Yes, yeah, sure. thank you. Where's your uncle, Mr. Weatherby? I'll have to ask your indulgence, gentlemen. Uncle Amos is a very sick man. He'll be here in just a moment with his physician, Dr. Greer. Well, that's too bad. Why, I didn't know he was ill. In the meantime, we'll get down to business. You gentlemen are a committee appointed by the mayor, I believe, to represent the city in receiving a gift of $1 million from my uncle to be matched by another million appropriated by the city to build a children's hospital. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, gentlemen, it is my sad duty to have to inform you that my uncle is withdrawing his offer. What? What's that? Did, did we hear you right, young man? You did, gentlemen. My uncle feels that he has too many obligations and too many duties right now. He is on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Therefore, he is turning his affairs over to me to manage. Well, what about your authorizing this gift? Oh, gentlemen... I agree with Uncle Amos. I do not feel that his financial condition will allow such a gift to be made at present. But what the city has already appropriated its share. The land has been condemned, and the work of demolishing old tenements has been started. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but the decision is final. Well, I demand to see Amos Tilson. Until I hear it from his own lips, I will not believe uh, just that Just he... a moment, gentlemen. Here's Uncle Amos now. He will speak for himself. We will chair over here, please. Uh, gentlemen... What my nephew has just told you is true. I'm turning my affairs over to a younger man to handle. I want to rest and enjoy life. As soon as my nephew converts my real estate holdings and other possessions into cash, we are going away for a long trip. Heaven speed the day. I am very... Tired. Dr. Dreer, my uh, uncle, I'm afraid he's, he's just fainted. Uh, if you'll have the maid get some water, I'll give him a hypodermic. Gentlemen, I know you'll excuse me, but I must be uh, with my uncle. It's a very pretty scene, but it won't well, who's that? Uh, it looks it, like... It is Amos Tilson, the real Amos Tilson. This man is an imposter. I'll call the police. Imposter, my eye, you young chickenettes. You and that crooked Dr. Dreer thought you could get rid of me and take over my fortune, but your plans didn't work out. Look, look there, the other Tilson, he's running for the door. And Dr. Dreer with him. Stop that. <laughs> Who is it? The Blue Beetle. And I've come to nip three crooks. Stand where you are. Dreer, Weatherbley, and Olson. Officer Manigan and his assistants will escort you to headquarters. They're on their way here now. Good work, Blue Beetle. But where's my daughter? Oh, here I am, Uncle Amos. The Blue Beetle just released me from my room. Her line has locked me in. Well, he'll soon be locked in where even the Blue Beetle can't free him. Gentlemen, tell the mayor... My gift to the city still stands. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Tilson. Don't thank me. Thank the Blue Beetle. If it hadn't been for him, there'd be no children's hospital for York City. Who 
Well, Danny, and how did you like your visit to the booby hatch, as Mannigan calls it? <laughs> oh, that's a terrible place. Uh, well, what will happen to it now that Dr. Dreer is in prison? Hey, Miss Tilson's going to take it over and make a real sanitarium out of it. Put a real psychiatrist at the head of it, and install modern conveniences and more humane personnel. Ah, that's splendid. Uh, uh, what about Weatherby? He's to be disinherited. Tilson's money will go to his foster daughter, Diana. Well, the Blue Beetle certainly straightened that situation out. But there's one thing he forgot. Forgot? Yes, a promise he made to King Arthur. King Arthur? Why, who's King Arthur? One of the unfortunates at the sanitarium. Uh, where are you going, Danny? I'm going to buy King Arthur the new round table I promised him. <laughs> So a little private work of Patrolman Dan Garrett as the Blue Beetle brought happiness to many people as well as justice to a group of dishonest men. The moral of this story is always find time to help the unfortunate. And whenever you make a promise, keep it. What further adventures await the Blue Beetle in his crusade against crime? This question will be answered in the next transcribed episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.